has blessed us with and your gift is not your own. Your gift is always for somebody else. It's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Amen. The gift of beauty, the gift of song, the gift of poetry, the gift of rapping, the gift of music, the gift of oratory, eloquence. It's just all gifted. Amen. It's good to have gifted people around you, isn't it? Amen. 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 In the book of St. Matthew, St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, I would like to consider just three verses beginning at verse 20. It's in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 28. I was looking for LG. He disappeared somewhere. Uh, 28 through 30. And it says, Come unto me all, ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Uh, let's look at somebody and tell them, whatever you're going through, it'll be all right. So just rest. So all you've got to do is rest. It is interesting that all of us have to deal with pain. There's absolutely nobody here that does not have to deal and understand pain. And to operate within the parameters of pain, regardless of how you hurt, pain. And I've learned something about pain. It's very individual. It's very idiosyncratic to the point that no one can actually share exactly how you feel. We can go through the same circumstance, same situation, and the individuals right beside us, no matter how they care about us, nobody can actually feel what you feel to the same level. It's one thing about pain and your concept of God. It's so uniquely yours that it cannot be imitated or duplicated. It's just yours. But I've also found out in, in my own personal life that I either have the pain of discipline or I end up with the pain of consequence. It's either that I control the pain to keep me walking within the right parameters and the right place, or I end up being dangled by the pain of consequence. You're either going to have pain up front that you can control, or you're going to end up with pain of being controlled by circumstances because you didn't control yourself going in. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're you going to hurt. You're either going to hurt with the discipline of doing what is right, or you're going to hurt with the consequences of doing what's wrong. It's, uh, there's, there's absolutely no way because every human being has to deal with issues of pain. Sometimes, in order we try to, uh, what I might say, uh, medicate ourselves. And we oftentimes seek things to make it less painful. Men have a way of reaching into a sexual situation simply because they're trying to ease the pain. And many times we think that sexual encounters eases. Pain. 15 minutes to get into something and 15 years to get out. And I said to one of my friends once, I said uh, that the, 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 you know, I've got to word it properly so that I won't, uh, you won't blog me. Uh, I, I said that, that the sex that you're getting, is it worth the sex that you're going to get? 
I didn't, I didn't say it like that. Uh, you, you, you understand how I said it. Uh, uh, oftentimes, the pain of eating properly and the discipline that comes with having to turn away the things you like the most oftentimes saves you the pain of disease. Because once it begins to flow and once the consequences begin to come, then you oftentimes wish that you had done the right thing in the first place. Because either you're going to have the pain experience early that is controllable or you're going to have the pain experience that you cannot control. The pain sometimes of uh, not partying, and the pain of not being out, running around all the time, and the pain of staying home and doing the discipline in the books, and the pain of ending up with a master's in business and speaking Mandarin, and the pain not being out with everybody else while they're partying and dancing uh, leaves you ultimately with the strength of being able to take care of yourself. So while others didn't want the pain of studying, they wanted to, to play, now they end up with the pain of having to look to everybody to make their lives work. <laughs> Ooh, I told somebody once, I said, you'll take my money, but you won't take my advice. But if you took my advice, you won't need my money, because you have your own. I feel something pushing me here. Uh, you're going to have to deal with pain. And it's better to have the pain of being by yourself than to have the pain of being with somebody that's crazy. Now, it's better to have the pain every now and then uh, get lonely than to be around somebody who's so crazy. Uh, amen. Uh, you know, oh Lord, help me with this today. Uh, it's, it's, it's an important piece because Jesus is saying that there is something about my yoke. I'm not saying that I'm not going to yoke you, but I'm simply saying that it's better to trade your yoke in for my yoke because my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Ooh, I feel it here. Have you ever been around somebody who, uh, you know, might be beautiful, I use the word all the time, and handsome and beautiful, but it's just a lot of tension. I don't know, have you had anybody in your life that whenever they show up, it's just things get tense. Uh, you know, the TV is too loud. Uh, uh, what do I smell? The, uh, the car is too dirty. The, 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 the cat meows too much. I, I don't know if you've been around anybody where it's just nothing but tension. And so they're swinging from one pole to the other and you don't really know how to deal with them. And God helps you if you're yoked. <laughs> and you can't break the yoke because the yoke is two oxen together going and plowing together and they're tied in together. You see, what Jesus is saying is when you come to me, I'll make your yoke easy. Which means don't come to me with anybody who doesn't want to be with me. Because, uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. because if you come to me, then you will bring somebody with you who wants to be with me. And because they want to be with me, I'll give them an easy yoke. So because they have an easy yoke, they don't have to destroy you because both of us are in relationship with Jesus Christ, whether it be in business or marriage, whether it be just friendship. The issue is to get a light yoke, I have to go to Jesus because Jesus is the only one who will not put pressures on me that I cannot handle. Oh, I feel something happening here. And so the call then is a call to self-awakening. 
And he's calling me to realize that in and of myself, I don't have the capacity to make my life work. I will labor consistently for the meat that perisheth. And I'll never get to the place where I can relax in who I am because the only way to get to know who I am is to get close to him. It is a call to self-leaving. It is a call to have to admit with all the pride that you have that you are not all that much without him. Uh -huh. It's a call to self-leaving. Do you remember when the Bible says that you must leave and cleave? And it's talking about coming into the world and then choosing a mate. What he's saying to me is you came in one way, but I want you to leave the place of your birth. And I want you to cleave to me because what I have, you need to get through life. In other words, I don't need everybody to make my life work. I just need Jesus to make my life work. Because a man can't give you Jesus, a woman can't give you Jesus, a car can't give you Jesus, a house can't give you Jesus. But Jesus can give you a man. And Jesus can give you a woman, a house, and a car. So what he's saying to me is, you're running around trying to do things for yourself that I would do for you if you take on my yoke. Because my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Can I talk a little bit about just the invitation? The Grammys are going on today and many of us are not there because we didn't have an invitation. And the Bible is full of invitations because what God is saying, if you ever want to be safe, you have to come to me. And the call was in Genesis when he said to Noah, come thou and all thy house into the ark. It was an invitation to safety. And that is, I'm getting ready to wipe the world out. But if you come, I will protect you and your whole house. Do you know how many of your family members been protected simply because you came? And what he realizes is, if he does not protect who you love, then the yoke won't be easy. So he protects who you love in order to keep your yoke easy and your burdens light. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. He, he moves in the space that you pray and he blesses the people you pray for because your motivation to pray for them is driven by his need to keep your yoke easy and he realizes if your families fall apart around you that it's going to destroy the very mood that he has established so the call is come come then of course Moses said to Hobab he, he, the son of Rachel the Midianite he said come with us and we will do you good it's good to have people around you who come to you and you to them. And anytime you're in their presence, something good comes about it. Because many of us don't trust like we should because we've been hurt with people so horribly because we gave all that we had only to get nothing in return. Because everybody that you get close to will not do you good. But when you take on the yoke of Jesus Christ, he will scream who gets into your space. And I've got news for you. Sometimes he'll reach in your space and snatch him out. Uh -huh, I feel like preaching now. Uh, the problem with us is we keep going back to reach for people that God is moving out of our lives. Because what he's saying is uh, your yoke is not easy with that person or this person or the other person but I'll make a person that I'll fix your yoke and make it easy. Can I preach like I feel it? Uh, have God around 
God is to have power around. And so the fellowship then is essential to making the yoke work. Then of course, he said, come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. If I'm going to be cleansed, I have to have an invitation. Because no man comes except the Father draw. He's got to open the door and he's got to give me an RSVP and says, come, let us reason together. I need you to rest enough to come and sit and talk with me because I can fix all the things you're trying to fix that you can't get done. And if you just spend some time with me, I'll fix everything that's broken in and around your life. Come. I wish somebody would say, I'm coming, Lord. Somebody say, I'm coming. Uh, and then he says, of course, satisfaction. Uh, God, the only way to get satisfaction is he says, Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come. Come ye to the waters. And he that is miserable, come. If you're hungry, come and eat. Because in my presence is everything that you need to make your life work. I have tried to find satisfaction out of God. And all I've ended up with more pain than I need. Because everything I reach for to satisfy me ends up biting me. See, what I'm learning now is, Lord, you do the choosing. And let me not do my own choosing, but you do the choosing for me. Because everything I choose puts a yoke around my neck. That's about to choke me to death, but Lord, you promise me, come, ah, take my yoke upon you. Can, can I preach just a little bit longer? I'm not going to keep you all, all day. He, he says the gospel feast in Matthew 24, the feast, he says, come for all things ready. You don't have to prepare anything. I've got it all ready. All I need you to do is show up. Uh, just tell somebody, show up. Uh, show up, you ain't got to cook. Show up, you ain't got to wash any dishes. Show up, you ain't got to work it out. The Lord said, all I need you to do is come. Because I got everything ready. And when God puts something together, there is no devil in hell that can break it up. And I've got news for you. There are some things that he has made custom just for you. And all he wants you to do is come get it, come get it, come get it. In Revelations, there's a threefold call. In the spirit and the bride say come. And let him that heareth come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him come and take of the waters of life freely and so now he embellishes it with come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest I want you to look at somebody and just ask them aren't you just a little tired amen aren't you just a little tired of having to fight your own battle Aren't you just a little tired of having to overcome evil people? Aren't you just a little tired of having to deal with folks who don't want you to be all that you can be? Aren't you just a little tired of being limited by small thinkers who happen to be in control of your space? What the Lord said to me is come come unto me because certain people can't come with you because they can't come in my space something about my anointing stops them at the door and you can step right into his presence and they can't come with you I'm here to tell somebody the Lord is saying to you come because if you come to me I'll eliminate who is holding you down just come, just come, just come and don't worry about the rest of them just come because if you come I'll make it alright 
oh God, I feel your presence. And so now Jesus says, he does not say come to God and receive these promises because he represents as fully authorized by God. Uh, defense between him and Socrates. Here's what Phaedo says in 918. He says, if you will take my advice, you will think very little of Socrates and much more of the truth, unquote. Well, Jesus happens to be the truth of the New Testament. So when he says, come to me, there is no mitigating self-consciousness or explanation. He just says, come to me because I'm the representative of God. And the truth is, if I have to explain it to you, then you don't know who I am. And you have missed the revelatory experience because all you got to do is come. Don't ask me what I got to do. Don't ask me what I'm going to give you. Don't ask me how I'm going to work it out. All I need you to do is come. Oh God, I feel it here. Come because I'm your protection. Come because I'm your keeper. Come because I'm your anointing. Come because I'm the power that declares weeping may and don't for a night but joy cometh in the morning come because when you're with me no weapon formed against you shall prosper it's time to come it's time to come it's time to come he says come here to me all ye who are working hard and what he does now is he gets God's face in Jesus' face and he's saying to us that I didn't intend for you to labor and end up with nothing how many of us have worked